Hi, I'm Keith Norris, and in this video we are going to review and discuss creating a new project in KPI Fire and provide a couple of tips for having a successful project outcome. So the simplest way to create a new project is just click on the Projects tab on the very top and then select the New Project button over here on the right. And just a little side note here, you can create a new idea and then an idea can be activated and turned into a project, but for this example we're just going to go straight to creating a new project. So step one, you just name the project. I'm going to use uh, improve the ABC process to reduce scrap. And then you select the department that you're in. The visibility controls how who will have access to this project. When you click create, you'll be prompted to select a workflow. Workflows are basically project templates. Your organization administrator may have enabled certain workflow templates for you. In my case, I'm just going to select start from scratch. And immediately my project is activated. It, it takes me to the Charter tab. A successful project starts with a good charter, so I can't stress enough the importance of having a good charter defined. I'm going to just fast forward a little bit here, and I've just typed in a little bit of information. And I'm just going to describe briefly the type of information that is in each one of these boxes. Now, these boxes are configurable. They can change, and they can be uh, tied to the workflow that you select. So if you select a different workflow, your project charter screen might look a little bit different than what I'm seeing right here. Uh, this is an example of how you could put some default text in your workflow as well. As you go through your charter, I'm going to talk a little bit about each of these boxes. The problem opportunity statement. What I've written here is describe the primary reason that this project should be done. In the case of my reduced scrap, scrap's costing us a million dollars on the RRR line. We want to improve scrap, could save us $500,000. That is a pretty good summary of the problem opportunity statement. The goal statement. For your goal statement, I would encourage you to think in terms of key results. What are the outcomes that you want to deliver for this project? So a good goal statement will be very clear and very concise. Um, I also would recommend that once you do have a clear and concise goal statement, that you might even con consider revising the name of your project to uh, not necessarily be the goal statement, but it should, it should um, resemble the goal statement. The next important area to define as part of your project charter is the project scope. So there's a few questions that I like to ask related to the project scope. Where does it start? Specifically, where does it start? So in this case, if I am indicating that I need to have an approval from a manager to pull their team into a meeting, that might be a good place where this project could start. What's included? What's specifically included? We're going to review the process. We're going to identify areas of potential improvement, we're going to define the new process, and we're going to train the new staff. Where will it stop? Where does this project end? We're going to move this project to the control phase for three months after we've completed three training events. That's a pretty good statement as to when it's going to stop. And what is specifically excluded or what related projects might exist? This is one thing that you want to avoid when you have a centralized project management system is duplicate projects. So you want to you want to uh, avoid creating duplication, but you also want to um, indicate linkages between projects. So in this case, if I have another project called Install New Cutters, I might indicate that that is a distinctly different project, even though it might have some of the same benefit to reduce scrap. That is a distinctly different project than this one, and I want to indicate that in the scope. The notes area. Notes, of course, you can put whatever you want in here. One thing that I would recommend using the notes for is entering items that you want to review at your next project review. Having a good project management system will help you stay more organized and it should help you communicate better. But as an organization, you still generally will need to create some norms of behavior and project reviews are a good uh, behavior to get into as an organization. And so if you use this notes area to summarize some notes on the project, you can pull those up and you can quickly do your your project reviews primarily from the charter statement. Uh, in the charter you also notice that you have an area to link metrics, projects, and goals. So if I want to link this uh, project to a, a goal, a metric, or another project, I can use the little plus button here and I can locate that, that related record type. Keep in mind these may be filtered, so you may need to clear your filters. The project benefit. Uh, the project benefit area sums up information that is over here under the project benefit tab. We may get into that uh, towards the end of this video. Um, we also will have some additional videos with more information on project benefits. Prioritization. These are going to be uh, ways to sort and organize and filter your projects primarily in the idea funnel and the project summary. 
the effort involved, the impact, and the priority. Key dates. When do you expect to start this project? When do you expect to finish it? So if, if we are planning a start date uh, very soon, I would select that date. And as I, you'll note that the actual completion, the actual start and the actual completion will be based on the values that you select in the workflow tab, which we'll get here in just a minute. A couple of other fields that are worth noting up here in the top of the project are who the project leader is. The project leader on this particular project is a user named strategy user. It's in the East department, which is one of my departments. I do not have a category on this project, which is not required. And the workflow that I've selected, I just used a start from scratch, so it's using my default workflow, but if I choose a, another workflow, that would be indicated here. And then my project status. Here's a little picture that shows you the flow of the statuses in KPI Fire. So you would start with an idea, an idea would become activated, and assuming that things go as planned, we would follow this green path. So from idea to active to control, you can certainly go right past control phase if you want to into completed. The negative outcomes or the dispositions of a project that don't end up as completed might be shelved or on hold if it moves out of active into on hold or if it moves out of the control stage into canceled. So that would give you an idea of the, the flow. Let's talk about these icons up here on the top. The heart icon is the project health. Uh, green means healthy and on target. Yellow means alert and red means in trouble. Every organization is going to make uh, give their own definitions and at what point you're going to uh, move those, but it would be a project leader's responsibility to provide some sort of visual cue as to the overall health of this project. Uh, you can favorite a project and then the project status, whether this project is past its scheduled completion time or not, this will turn uh, red. Let's talk about the team tab briefly. This is where you add members to the team of your project. So you just begin by starting to type in the first few characters of their name. If you want to, you can track an estimated number of hours that this person might be assigned to the project. This is a completely optional field. And as you add members to your project team, they will show up down below. Now notice that you've got a role column here. You can only have one project leader. You can have a project sponsor and you can have multiple project champions or you can have multiple project members. You can only have one project leader and you can only have one project sponsor. The project leader and the project sponsor will have the ability to edit the charter. The other members of your team will not. So it's important that the project leader takes responsibility for the project charter. You'll notice on the team tab here I have an option that says visible to. This is where I could change the department selection that I had that I chose when I created that project so I could make this project visible to other departments and flexible project means that I'm allowing the team members over in the workflow tab to reassign and edit the the tasks themselves okay let's jump to the workflow tab so depending on the workflow that you selected you may see different tasks in this area here so the tasks are the individual items of work that you want to complete and task groups are basically uh, milestones. So if I wanted to create a new milestone, I can create that. It just shows up at the bottom. Each of these open up. There's a little arrow on that to indicate whether it's opened or closed. And then I can add a new task in between. Okay, so if I wanted to say review project charter with the team, that becomes a task. That has my icon. You can configure an icon for your individual users in the user settings area. If I want to assign this to another user on the team, again, this list of users is based on the, the team that is selected in the team tab. I can assign this task to somebody else. The status is all going to be based on the to do, doing, and done. The due date, to change the start or the due date, simply click on it. Uh, this option here would allow you to skip weekends if you have a task that is done primarily on weekdays. Now approvals. Approvals can be configured. We may have a separate video with a little more detail on approvals. But basically if I want to add an approval for a task, let's say I wanted, uh, once this task is completed, I want an approval to be made for myself. I put my name in, click the plus button, click the plus button, and then when that task becomes finished, instead of saying done, it would say pending, and that would then trigger an alert to go to the user who needs to provide that approval. That user can indicate and click the uh, green checkbox to approve that task. 
Priority is pretty straightforward. Just toggle on it and you will get an option between four priorities. Prior task means if another task needs to be done before this task, you can select that task from the list. Another important feature is the ability to add attachments or notes. One thing that I would like to point out here is if you have a task that, that, is, that is in regards to a specific deliverable, like create training document, if I had a task such as create training document, it would be a very good idea for me to upload the file or link the file. If you're using an intranet, you can provide a link to that existing location. Or if you're going to upload the file, you can upload the file. You can upload the file to the system here. The note area is a good place to keep track of notes on each of your tasks. You can click the add date stamp button and it will put your username, the time and date stamp in. These boxes should open and close if you drag the corner. Just a few little pointers here. You can drag and drop the order of these tasks by clicking and holding and dragging them to change the order. There's also some additional options over here under these three buttons that will allow you to copy a task link. Let's say you want to um, copy a task link and just chat that to a coworker and say, hey, take a look at this task. Uh, you might also want to delete a task or lock a task. As a project leader, you can lock tasks so they can't be edited or changed. You can move a task to a different group. So much in the same way that I might drag a task from one group to another, I could do that with the uh, button over here, move group, or I can change the project that an actual, actual task is in. An individual task can only be in one project at a time. If I have a long list of tasks, I can use the move to top or move to bottom to move my tasks around. The timeline view is going to give you a Gantt style view of your project and you can drag and drop your dates and this will modify your dates depending on uh, Chrome and Firefox function just a little bit differently. But you can drag the whole task if you drag in the middle, you can drag the left or right edge depending on where you click and drag. The files area is where any files that you've uploaded will be stored. The Messages area is where you can create a communication thread for this particular project. And linked metrics and linked goals, these are, so you can show any of the linked metrics or goals here. And the status report is a way to provide a regularly scheduled, you can do this uh, daily or weekly, and you would simply type some names in here and I can schedule this to be a weekly project report that goes out and I can select the date that, that project report would go out. Or I can manually type in here and I can just send a one-off one report. All right, project benefits. Now, if the purpose of your project is continuous improvement or process improvement, you may want to indicate what kind of benefit you expect from that project. My default, you see we have uh, two layers here, a total which summarizes and rolls up the benefits from this layer two, you can also create uh, additional layers of benefits down below. And these can also be configured in your workflows. I would probably recommend that you leave these associated with the workflows if your administrator has set it up that way. But to open up these tiles at the bottom level, click right on the name of the tile, and that will open up a screen that looks a little bit like our metric screen, if you're familiar with that. And what I would recommend is that if you're going to have a project with certain benefit in there, you might indicate what your target benefit is. And then once a project is completed and you start to track your actual benefit, then you would go and, and track your, your actual benefit. Um, look for a separate video to go into a little bit more detail about project benefit and benefit tracking specifically. Okay, when your project is complete, you may want to go and mark your project as complete by changing the status to complete. And just to give you a quick little uh, direction as to some of the next videos that you might want to look at or areas of the application to explore, click on the projects area and you'll notice that we've got some other views and reports down here. I would encourage you to go explore those to see some of the other options that are available on projects. And another key feature on this summary page is the ability to edit the columns that are displayed. So if you want to change which columns show up here for you, you can change those here. Uh, the filters, of course, will filter to, to also determine what projects are in the list here. These can be sorted. Uh, it is possible to also create um, filters within this area here. So if you happen to create a filter here, you should notice that you have a, a filter icon and a colored column. You can click this little clear filters button right here and that will reset your filters and show you everything. 
All right, this has been a fast-paced overview of the project's functionality in KPI Fire. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you uh, have success with your projects in KPI Fire. Thank you.